Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we'll be leaning into the more, let's say, puzzling side of the series and taking a closer look at some unexplained powers. Now, despite One Piece being a series about magical fruits that grant just about any ability you can think of, the world of the story is still very much based in its own form of science, which makes it a bit tricky when we encounter some odd skills that are not devil fruit related, because for the most part, they are simply unexplained. The criteria for this list is quite simple. The abilities on display must have no real explanation for why they are allowed to occur. And just to clarify, I don't mean fan speculation as how they may be able to function. I mean that they are lacking an official explanation from the source material itself. Also, these powers must be canon because I really can't be bothered going through filler material. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five unexplained powers in One Piece. Number 5.5. Kumadori's hair. All right, so originally this was supposed to begin the list, but I sat down to write it and discovered that there is actually an explanation for Kumadori's tentacle hair, although it is somewhat unsatisfying. Essentially, Kumadori is able to manipulate his hair through the art of Seimei Kikan, which is a technique that grants supreme control of your bodily functions. Another example of this is how Rob Lucci is able to make himself bulky and skinny in leopard form, as he so desires. In fact, Kumadori himself did a similar thing when he became super fat from eating too much food in the fridge and then returned to his base form. And yet, yeah, Sure, I'll buy that, but the hair, ugh, it's a bit of a stretch. Plus, Kumidori claims that one needs to train for 2,000 years to master the art of Seimei Kikan, which is fairly unlikely because he was only 34 years old at the time of that statement. In any case, there you have it. He can do it because he can. Ability explained. Now let's move on to some real unexplained powers. Number five, Miss Golden Week's painting. As by far the earliest skill showcased in the series on this list, you'd be forgiven for misremembering this and actually thinking that Miss Golden Wick had eaten a devil fruit because essentially she is able to use the power of painting in order to access a wide variety of extremely effective results, such as making someone laugh uncontrollably, betray their friends, or even calm down for a nice picnic. Miss Goldenwick does this with what appears to be normal paint, so uh, what's the deal? Well, the closest thing we have to an explanation is that Miss Goldenwick is able to use her skills as a quote unquote realist painter to have such an impact on people that they have an entire personality change. By the way, here is Miss Goldenwick's words side by side with an actual realist painting. Yes, I know it is very difficult to tell the difference, but the key is to identify the piece of art that makes you feel something along the lines of complacency while all your friends are being suffocated in wax. Once you have that feeling, you'll know which one is Miss Golden Week's work. But yeah, this is a pretty absurd ability and one that remains quite unexplained. Number four. Madam Charlie's Future Sight. All right, Moment have a whole host of crazy powers, one of which is being able to communicate with fish, but hey, they are fish, so seems legit. Something that seems significantly less legit is the capability to actually see the future. Oh, but I mean, unless you're this guy. But even then, Katakuri could only see the future for a handful of seconds. Charlie's power is completely different. Using the fortune teller classic crystal ball, which may or may not be a pearl, as a medium, Charlie can predict future events with 100% accuracy. While she can't predict when they will happen, only that they will most certainly occur at some stage. Using this ability, Charlie was able to predict the dawning of the Great Age of Piracy, as well as Whitebeard's death at Marineford, and finally, that a man in a straw hat will destroy Fishman Island. That last one has yet to come true, but uh, given Charlie's previous track record, things aren't looking too great for Fishman Island. Just as with every other ability from here on out, there is no attempt whatsoever to explain it. Charlie just has it. No devil fruit, no hockey, just a crazy power completely out of nowhere. Number three, the King Punch. This attack is quite possibly one of, if not the strongest we've seen in the series thus far, and it just so happens to belong to someone who is dangerously forgettable. The punch of King Elizabeth II is so powerful that it is rumored to be capable of taking down even a Yonko. And having seen it in action, maybe, very maybe, I mean, it couldn't beat Bartolomeo's barrier, but still, maybe, but only if it was guaranteed to hit. The primary issue with the King Punch, in addition to the generally weak and slow nature of its user, is that it takes an entire hour to charge before it is ready for release. So yeah, good luck defending yourself against a Yonko for a whole hour while that happens. But that aside, the nature of what exactly the King Punch is, is simply baffling. To my pathetic eyes, it looks very much like a release of absurdly powerful air pressure in the general direction of a target, but I mean, how? Does Elizabello store up some sort of energy? Well, we don't really have a key system in One Piece. So does he continually build his muscles up to the point where it becomes possible to cause such an environmental effect naturally? I just, I don't know. And we may never know. 
And so for now, the King Punch remains one of the greatest unexplained powers in the series. Number 2. Ashura. Since the early days of One Piece, Zoro has been consistently referred to as a demon or possessing the aura of a demon. Generally, I always read this as Zoro's enemy simply being intimidated by him. However, when you grow two extra heads, four extra arms, and six extra swords, then I might need to sit down and take the time to reassess that thought. In any standard shonen series, explaining Ashura is fairly simple. It's a manifestation of Zoro's aura sculpted into a convenient form for use in combat. The problem is that Aura isn't really a thing in One Piece. I mean, the closest thing we have is Haki, and Oda has gone to great lengths to designate a mere three different types, none of which are in any way similar to whatever the hell Ajura is. Although the most maddening thing about Ajura is that it was introduced comparatively early on in the series, and we're now 500 chapters on, and we know exactly as much about it as we did back then. I guess then again, if we did know much more about it, then it probably wouldn't be unexplained and I'd have to find something else to fill the number two spot. And really that sounds like a lot of effort right now. So I'm just going to be thankful for now. So we move on to number one. The voice of all things. Sitting at the peak of unexplained powers, we have the very vaguely defined voice of all things. I mean, with that said, it's pretty simple. It's all in the title, really. Whoever possesses this power has a supernatural ability to hear voices not distinguishable to the regular ear, such as the voices of sea kings or the giant elephant Zunisha. Allegedly, this power can also be utilized to gain information from poneglyphs, even without knowledge of the ancient language. So how does one gain this ability? Well, as of right now, it looks an awful lot like you have to be born with it, much like Conqueror's Haki. In fact, the living characters who currently have access to the voice of all things are completely unaware of what it is or how to engage with it. But that said, it's also quite hard to define who even has this ability and to what degree, if indeed there are degrees. There are characters like Roger, Luffy, and Momonosuke who have been solidly confirmed, but we also have people like Shirohoshi who was able to hear the Sea Kings, and to an even lesser degree, we have things like Zoro being able to hear the breath of steel, stone, and any other object he wishes to cut or not cut. What is clear, however, is that this power is completely world-changing and will be integral for the remainder of the series. However, at this moment, it remains incredibly mysterious and highly unexplained. And that pretty much does it for the top five unexplained powers in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite unexplained powers in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.